Are you considering living in Utah? Well, on today's video, I'm going to talk about some of the things that you might not have thought about when living in Utah. Let's get to it right now. And I'm Mike Gallagher. If you want to learn everything about living in Utah, eating, sleeping, drinking, whatever there is, you've come to the right channel. You might consider hitting that subscribe button down below. Let's become a friend. Also, if you hit that bell notification, you'll be notified every time I release a new video. And that's every week. And I absolutely love the phone calls and emails I get from all over the world. So if you're even considering buying or selling real estate in Utah, call me, text me, shoot me an email. I got your back when moving to Utah. So you're considering making a move to Utah. I've got some things you might want to consider about living in Utah. Let's start with living in the mountains or living in the countryside. I get a lot of phone calls from people who say, Mike, I want an acre of land or two acres. I want to live out in the mountains or live out in the countryside. I know a thing or two about this. I grew up as a city boy. My wife grew up on a farm. I've learned over the years what it takes to live in the countryside and I'm going to share some of my top tips for some of the things that you will encounter living in the countryside or in the mountains. So we all need groceries, cleaning supplies, toilet paper, etc, etc. Well, living in the country, you might have a little bit of a drive to get these particular items, especially if you're looking at going to a Costco or a Sam's Club. You might have a 30 mile drive, 60 mile drive to the nearest Costco or Sam's Club, maybe 10 mile drive to the nearest uh, grocery store. So keep that in mind. Now I do have a tip for you on this. What a lot of people will do is they will put shelving in their garage or in their basement and they will stock two of everything, one in the house, one in the garage. So when you run out of ketchup, napkins, paper towels in the house, you go in the garage, take your supply, put it in the house. Then when you do your next grocery run, since you have a little bit of a distance to go, you look in the garage to what you are missing and you buy those items. Cell phone service. We all need our cell phones and love to use our cell phones. Well, sometimes in the mountains or in the countryside, cell phone service may be very weak or non-existent in some areas. The joke around our household always is when we go to the farm, my niece and nephew, when someone says, where's Mike? They usually will say, oh, he walked up the hill. And I literally have to walk down the street about a third of a mile up to the top of a hill to get cell phone service to make a decent phone call. So my tip for you is on cell phone service. I personally have T-Mobile. My relatives all have Verizon. They seem to have no issues at all in the rural areas with Verizon. Internet. I live down in the valley and I have Xfinity and I absolutely love their high-speed internet package. Well, in some of the country areas and the mountain areas, Xfinity is not available. So my tip for you on that is check with some of the satellite internet providers and see what their upload, download speeds are. Because if you're trying to run like a business or you need certain internet speeds, make sure that those companies can provide that for your service. So you decide to buy that house with the land, half acre, three quarter acre, five acres, 10 acres. Well, it needs to be maintained. And typically you'll have the house and you'll have some nice yard work around the house and that's easily to maintain. It's normally the rest of the land that becomes a little bit of an issue because it, most of the time I find that it's left in its natural state which means throughout the spring, summer, and fall, the weeds will grow and the weeds will grow. So you need to maintain them. But I got a couple tips for you on maintaining the weeds. If you only have maybe half acre, three quarter acre, you could buy like a DR trimmer. You push it along and it's got a blade on the front to chop the weeds down to maintain them. But once you get above maybe one acre, you might want to consider like a small tractor with a bushwhacker blade on the back to take over and mow all the weeds down throughout that time period. Animals, I'm not talking about just dogs and cats. I'm talking about the local wildlife that lives in the mountains or in the countryside. Are you prepared to share your backyard with the local wildlife? I have a tip for you here. 
Be careful of leaving food outside, especially like dog food. You will find that it will attract more wildlife to your backyard. So you're moving to the countryside or to the mountains because you want to get away from rules and regulations. You don't want some HOA telling you what you can do and what you can't do. Now, you may keep your house and your yard absolutely immaculate, nothing out of place. Now, your neighbor next to you, he's also living there because he wants to live by his own rules and regulations. Well, he might keep old junky cars, old boats, old motorhomes, piles of garbage on his property. Winter snow. I live down in the valley, so when I get one, two, three inches of snow in the mountains, you're getting eight, nine, ten inches or more. So if you work a job that you have to be there, you can't take the day off or work from home because of snow, you will have to plan ahead. Now the city plows will plow the freeways first and then some of the major secondary roads. Some of the mountain roads are towards the end of the list for snow removal. Now my tip for snow removal. If you're living in the mountains, you'll need a large snow blower with a track system on it that is self-propelled or maybe a small tractor with a blower on it or a blade or maybe a four-wheeler or UTV with a blade on it or a pickup truck with a blade will make snow removal a little bit easier. A note on moving to Utah, the people here are awesome and if you move to Utah, they would welcome you with open arms, but they would like you to leave the values of some other states at the border. They like how it is in Utah and they do not want it to change. Maybe you're going to consider living along the Wasatch Front. A couple things to keep in mind. So between Ogden and Provo during rush hour traffic of so the morning and in the evenings, it can be slow and go and it can get backed up a little bit. So a couple tips I have. The first one is we have a great mass transit system. If you have the ability to take that, that would be an option. Also, maybe you can find an employer that will allow you to start earlier or later in the morning and also get off earlier or get off later to avoid the traffic. Snow level along the Wasatch Front. So the mountains are located to the east. The closer that you get to the mountains, the more snowfall you will receive. There are many times I've driven along I-15 and the, it's just a rain slush mixture and then I head towards the east benches and people up there have two, three, four inches already on their driveway and in their yards. So in conclusion, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you'd give me a thumbs up. If you have any kind of questions, by all means, reach out to me. I'd glad to talk to you. Until the next video, take care and stay safe.